Hello, everybody, and welcome to Sake Revolution. This is America's very first sake podcast, and I am one of your lovely hosts, John Puma. Uh, I am from a little site called The Sake Notes, and also the administrator over at the ever-growing internet sake Discord. And I am your host, Timothy Sullivan. I'm a sake samurai, a sake educator, as well as the founder of the Urban Sake website. And every week, John and I will be here tasting and also chatting about all things sake and doing our best to make it fun and easy to understand. Mm -hmm. And Tim. Yes. We're, we're, we're close to the end here. I hope you had a very happy and productive 2021. Yeah, it is the end of the year can't believe it. I'm very excited for the holidays, but not sure what next year is going to bring. Now it's uh, yeah. ever changing. Uh, this is yes. an ever changing. I th you know, remember, remember we thought that we were like really coming out the other end of the strong? <laughs> yes. And then, and then Omicron. Boop, happened. boop. Yeah. 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 And the one thing we've talked about again and again is wanting to get back to Japan. Yeah. And it's not in the cards right <laughs> <Yeah>. now. <laughs> that carrot gets, every time we get, it just swings further away every single time. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, it might be fun today to take a little bit of a look back at 2021, uh, see how we did, and maybe talk about some of our plans and ideas for 2022. What do you think? I, I like it. I like it. Now, um, we did a similar a similarly themed episode to this last year. And yes. one of the major things that came out of that was our sake revolution resolutions. Now I don't want to get into what, what 2022 is going to bring just yet, but I did want to start with how did we do? <laughs> how did we do on 2021? Well, I think we did all right. Should we remind the folks what our resolutions were? I definitely think that's important. <laughs> yes. Well, for me, my resolution was to drink more sake outside of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. For you, what does that mean? Well, my sake safe space is kind of sakes that are light, clean, crisp, and dry, mm -hmm. kind of easy drinking. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to drink more sake that was maybe bold and rich and earthy, umami-driven, and just not as light and clean. Hmm. And I have to say that the one thing that made that resolution really happen is doing this podcast with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of um that's one thing we came we, we realized this year is that the, there's a lot of sake that is not in our wheelhouse that we hmm. drink for the show. And so it does yeah. kind of force us to to have things that normally we wouldn't go out and buy on our own, right. right? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know about you, but I've had some good experiences with that. Absolutely. I've been surprised. It's sake that I wouldn't grab off the shelf at first glance if I was shopping, but having it for the show and drinking it at home, it's like, oh, this is really interesting and I can appreciate X, Y, Z about this sake. Again, it's not something I want to drink relaxing on the couch every night, but every sake has its time and its pairing and its place. Mm, and that's yeah, a big yeah. takeaway. Uh, I, I also think, I think I pre we predicted a little bit, a couple of weeks back, we talked about the advent calendar, the sake advent calendar. Yes. And I think that, you know, getting a lot of different, different sake that you didn't hand select yourself mm. from all, you know, all different profiles on it is really going to, encourage experimentation so, yeah, yeah for sure yeah so i think i i rose to my revolution resolution i don't know if i knocked it out of the park <laughs> but <laughs> i i was very much in the spirit of of that and running a sake podcast really helped me achieve my goal <laughs> nice yeah well what about you remind everyone what your resolution was mine was to buy more sake locally Mm -hmm. And I think I did a pretty good job. A couple of places near me have have some smaller sake selections. And so I've been buying from them a bit more and, and also conversing with them and 
encouraging them to expand their selections a little bit more so I can have more to buy. Um, yeah. I've also been yeah. doing my part to support local sake breweries. So, you know, getting uh, getting the bike out and going over to Kato Sake Works in Bushwick, going out and getting mm. on the train and going to Brooklyn Kura uh, yeah. over in over in Industry City in Brooklyn. And, you know, just trying to get out there and taste the sake that's being sold around here a little less from the big stores, a little bit more from the little guys. So I think I did all right. I feel like I could still do more, but Mm. I did, I did, I did pretty good. I was just looking back, John, at all the topics, all the different shows we did in 2021. And I was wondering, do you have a favorite show of all the episodes (laughs) Ah. we did? Oh, do I have a favorite show? So I was looking over the 2021 episodes and I, it's there's so many that I forgot we did <laughs> this year. I was there were so many yes. that I thought happened in 2020. Yeah. Um, we had a lot of series that we started that I thought was mm. great. I think that you know we had the Shubo series, that we had the pressing series. We added a lot more to the Wild Rice series. <laughs> uh, I really thought those were a lot of fun um, yeah. to do. Those are like my favorite types. I like those little little short series that we do. Yeah. Uh, what about you? Well, one episode that I really enjoyed a lot was the kawaii sake labels, <laughs> the the super cute sake labels. It was like a frivolous topic, and I really enjoyed the sake. And it was just so cute looking into the design ideas behind these like super cute labels and learning about the cat and about the, the snow yeti and Niigata and all this stuff. And mm-hmm. I just... that was just something that stayed with me that was really unexpectedly fun. So I really enjoyed that. Yeah. Like I said, I I have a hard time picking a single one, but I really did enjoy uh, a lot of our small, our short series. I thought those were, those were great. Uh, And the introduction of branded, those were, those were fun. Those were a nice excuse to talk about whatever sake we were really feeling that week. (laughs) That was a lot of fun to do. Uh, You know, we kind of crossed over the you know interviewing with that branded idea when we had Sam on, even though that was only a few short weeks ago. Yeah. So yeah, that was nice. I liked that a lot. Yeah, well I should also mention maybe some of the stats that we achieved in twenty twenty one. So do you love the numbers. I you? I love to crunch the numbers. And we published, including this one today, we published forty nine episodes in twenty twenty one. 49. 49. You know what that means? Yes. <laughs> what, we missed a few because it's 52 weeks in a year, Tim. <laughs> Maybe a few weeks slipped by, yeah, but yeah. that's pretty darn good for a year. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah. You know. And at, at the end of 2020, we had just over 10,000 downloads of episodes. And at the end of 2021, we're almost at the end of the month. We have 28,000 downloads. Hmm. So we went from 10,000 in one year to 28,000 in one year. I think that's really good. That's almost three times as much. That's not bad. So, so, you're, yeah. so what you're saying is that people seem to like the show. <laughs> well, <laughs> Or at least they're the, listening to it. I don't know if they, if they like it or not. The audience is growing, which is awesome. And I mean, it makes sense. It takes time to get the word out and for Google to figure out what your show's all about and all that stuff. So it's been uh, really exciting to see the downloads go up and the number of episodes go up. And uh, it takes a lot of hard work to get an episode out every week. But uh, looking back at a whole year, it's really rewarding, don't you think? I think so. And, you know, we also, let's not forget, we also launched the Patreon this year. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was a thing. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. And that's that been was... a lot of fun to do also. And, you know, getting uh, getting to kind of meet with uh, our constituents on a monthly basis has been um, has been nice. Uh, it helps us kind of get, you know, get get opinions on people who are helping to make this happen and and, you know, see like what they're you know, what, what they want to see more of. And it's just been a lot of fun. Uh, hey, you know, Tim, it's a little early, but I think it's, you know, an episode like this is never too early for us to have a drink. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Let's yeah. do it. Let's. 
So this is going to be a free form, let your hair down, potluck sake selection. There's no theme or rhyme or reason. None. We just picked a sake we wanted to go with. So do you want to introduce your sake first? Sure, sure. Um, now, before I do, I'm going to say that this was not the sake I planned to oh. have. My wife received this sake as a gift yesterday. <laughs> and today I was I was doing some work this afternoon and she brought over a little a, you know a little cup to help distract me a little bit cuz I was getting a little frustrated. And as she's putting the glass down I'm I'm like, "Wow, this aroma." I she's like it's it's far from me I and mean, I could still like just it's really just just intense. It, it was smelled delicious and I was like, "Is this what I think this is?" She's like, "Yeah." I was like, "You mind if I use this for the show?" She's like, "No, go ahead." So, I have the uh, kid, the Heiwa Shuzo kid, Junmai Daiginjo. And this is using a Yamada Nishiki, milled down to 50% of its original size. Sake meter value, that measure of dry to sweet, is plus two. So you know, just a hair on that on the drier side. But really almost a meaningless number, I think, plus two. <laughs> and, um, and the alcohol percentage is... 15%. And uh, Heiwa Shuzo is located in Wakayama Prefecture. And for those interested, we did a whole episode on Heiwa Shuzo with a kid brand. Yes, and we that did. And that was episode 65. Yeah, that was uh, one of our earlier branded episodes. Yeah, and that's where we established the Sake Brewer's hero's journey of working in the big city, returning to the brewery, taking over, and changing to a modern style, which yeah. is a story we've we've heard a few times. That's been like my favorite story. I think like, you know, that that overarching concept has been like yeah. my favorite thing that we've covered <laughs> in 2021. It's just been such a yep. fun tale to hear over and over again. And and Tim, what about you? Well, I wanted to stay true to my revolution resolution. Mm -hmm. So I reached for a sake I have in my sake fridge that may not be something I would gravitate to every day. Mm. It is a super dry sake. Mm. So this is, uh, the brand is Toyo Bijin Junmai Ginjo, and it's the Okarakuchi, or super dry Ooh. version. So the classification is Junmai Ginjo. This is from Yamaguchi Prefecture, and the brewery name is Sumikawa Shuzojo. And the rice that they're using is Yamada Nishiki. That's milled down to 55%. The acidity is 1.5. We have an alcohol of 16.5%. And the big number here to look at is the SMV, plus 15, 1, 5. Ooh, wow. Yeah. That is dry. So <laughs> this is one of the highest SMVs we've featured on the podcast for sure. So plus 15 for the SMV. Hmm, that is intense. Yeah. So I think it's going to be really dry on the finish and I'm super excited to try it. I've had this before a long time ago, but I really wanted to revisit it. And yeah, so that's what I brought along for today. All right. Fantastic. Well, why don't we, uh, why don't we get these sakes into our respective glasses? All right, I'm going to open mine up. And I'm going to give it a pour. All right. So I've got my Toyo Bijin in the glass. And Toyo Bijin is often translated in English as Asian beauty. Mm. And this brewery, Sumikawa Shuzojo, is relatively young for Japan. It was founded in 1921. Really? So they just had their 100-year anniversary this year. Oh. You know, it's yeah. when, you, when you said like relatively young, and you said 19, I was like, oh, wow, 19 anything. We usually don't get that. And then it's like <laughs> no, 100 years. Like, oh, yeah. Or it's 2021, isn't it? Yep. Uh. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to give this a smell. Now, with an SMV of plus 15, that super dry marker, you would think that this would smell 
ricey and like alcohol right up your nose, but it does not. Mm. It actually smells like apple peel. Really? Yeah. It has a apple pear kind of aroma to it. Really interesting. Not, you know, some super dry sakes have ethanol right up your nose, like so much alcohol aroma, but this is not like that at all. It's really a, a light aroma and it has some apple or pear notes to it. Nice. I'm going to give it a taste. Mm. Okay. So, wow. The finish is super dry, but it's not unpleasant or over the top. Mm-hmm. It, it has a very, very dry finish. Sometimes people ask me, like, what do you mean by dry? Like, sake is wet. Why would it taste <laughs> dry? <laughs> well, When we say dry, we kind of mean the absence of sugars. Mm -hmm. So sugar is or glucose is brought in to balance the taste of the alcohol. And you can have more or less of those sugars. And when the sugars get more reduced, the alcohol notes come forward more. And it if you think about sipping on a martini or sipping on gin, it kind of feels like it's pickling the sides of your tongue a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's the impression that you get from a super dry sake so you get a little bit of that uh, almost like a tannin impression on the sides of the tongue where it kind of dries out Mm. and um but the the start of the flavor when you sip on this toyo bijan is balanced it's light and then it finishes super dry like drying out your tongue and uh really interesting it also has a little bit of a spicy finish to it. Like I read a tasting note that said it has a little bit of a nutmeg finish or baking spices on the finish. Mm. And there's just a hint of that. So this feels like a good autumnal sake. Starts with an apple peel aroma. It's a really light in the, in the beginning and kind of finishes super dry and a little bit spicy. Nice. Really good. Really good. Very nice. Cool. Yeah. Um. Uh, I, 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 that that sounds great. It sounds like it's, it yeah. sounds like you know, and we we talk about this a lot. Even though you've got that that big number, mm-hmm. it's still very well balanced. A lot of the time, the inference, the, the idea you get in your head is when some factor of a beverage is so high, when one number mm. is so much higher than everything else, you immediately assume that it's going to be wildly in one direction at the cost of everything else, and yeah, sake when it's when it's made right isn't like that. Sake is all about balance. So it's my turn. Yeah, and I poured this a little while ago. Okay, and I have been just sitting here being taunted by the aroma, even though this glass is halfway across my desk. <laughs> it is. There's so much, Tim. There's so much aroma. Uh, I mentioned that a little bit earlier, but it's just wow. All that aroma. And it is like strawberry. Yeah. Something and, and the aroma is even maybe like a almost like cotton candy in a way. But but strawberry is like the defining uh the defining aroma component for me. Just wonderful, wonderful stuff. Uh it is very clear, very, very, very transparent. And as I mentioned, just just phenomenally fruity, big aroma. That Junmai Daiginjo aroma right there. It's in, in your face. And for tasting it, hmm. So it's vibrant. It is, it's kind of soft, but not like, you know, we, we've talked about how sometimes we have stuff that's that Daiginjo mouthfeel that luxuriousness that, that clings not so much here mm-hmm. you know it's soft it's light the clean the finish is really clean you know the fruit is still present but it kind of relaxes a little bit because you're getting enough of that in the nose <laughs> just really 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 delicious this is and i think i've used this phrase to describe the kids stuff in the past it's just so drinkable and mm. that clean finish has you ready for the next sip because you, you just it's it's gone and you enjoyed it so you want more and uh, at least <laughs> at least i do 
So it's safe to say this is well outside of your comfort zone. <laughs> <laughs> I can barely see it from right now. This is uh, all kidding aside. This is very much in my zone. This is, um, you know, I picked this for for a reason. I thoroughly enjoy this. Okay, uh, the aroma is so fruity; it might put some people off. To be, yeah. you know, being completely honest, but the taste doesn't have that. Like it's not the, mm-hmm. the taste isn't as aggressively fruity as the aroma. Yeah. And, in, and it's just so well balanced and so nice and refreshing when you taste it. Uh, and then, you know, when you're sipping on it again, that, that aroma is there. You're, you're yeah. not going to, you know, it's, it's, you're going to experience it again and just have a really good time sipping it again and again. And again and again. Yeah. Um, I, I have a question for you. So you mentioned cotton candy on the aroma mm-hmm. for your sake. And that makes me like a little warning, a little warning flag goes up in my mind. Like, oh. is this going to taste sweet? Right. So is you, it, you is definitely the, get that idea. Yeah. But it's, is it sweet? Not really. I mean, it's, it's yeah. not, it's, you know, it's not aggressively dry. It's not, it's no, um, no plus 15. Um, yeah. <laughs> but the, the, the finish is crisp and dry. Yeah. Like that. It is, you know, it's, it is a plus two sake. It's just that that aroma is just so Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, the flavor doesn't need to be like, I think that if the flavor were pack the punch, that fruit and sweetness punch that the aroma promises, mm. it would be too much. It would be, it would be out of balance. It then. would be out yeah. of balance. Yeah. And here yeah. you're just really like, it's, it's very, very nice in that way. It just really, um, again, just sets you up because you want some more of that aroma without really, without bowling you over with sweetness. Mm. You know, it could have been really oh. easy for them to make a decision and go, you know, go put full steam ahead and just make this just just sweetness bomb. But they, they, they didn't go that route. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you picked a sake that you're really going to enjoy to kind of ride out the end of 2021. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Well, yeah. Um, I have another question for you, getting back to kind of the year in review. Uh, was there anything that surprised you in our run of podcast shows for 2021? As far as sake surprises go, it's rare that I get to taste something on the show that I've never tasted before, right? You know, usually it's like stuff we've had, but it's been a long time, you know, maybe something like that. But when we had Byron Sithamon from Proper Sake Company at your place, no less, mm. we tasted his sake, you know, sight unseen. I'd never so much as sniffed the aroma before. And mm. so I didn't know what, exactly what to expect, but I knew that he was really into a little more, you know, crazy style stuff. And so I was a little worried that maybe it wasn't going to be my thing. And... Having, you know, having that sip and being like, oh, uh, oh, this is fantastic. This is really good. Yeah. yeah. That was a big, big surprise for me. It was just so, you know, uh, I think he described it as a pretty Yamaha. Yeah. And I, I was really into that and really impressed at how, uh, how much I enjoyed it and how well he was able to pull off that style, which I think is like really tricky. To you know, to, to to make a Yamaha, but also really make it approachable. And as somebody who's not the biggest Yamaha fan in the world, like having that that combination was just uh, was was a wonderful surprise. Yeah, that was a really fun episode. Byron is such a cool dude, and you and I were both tasting his sake for the first time with him sitting right there, yeah. <laughs> which is a very high pressure situation yeah, a little it was bit, yeah. really it was really good and just so exciting to see what domestic sake brewers are doing and that the fact that we had the chance to meet with him face to face was a really special episode for sure absolutely you know and we got to do an episode on location at your place which was great <laughs> absolutely and for me i think in the challenges category, I know you would agree with this for sure, is that we've tried doing foreign language interviews. (laughs) uh, We have. (laughs) And 
it's a challenge. It is difficult to edit that information and get the translation done correctly and do a voiceover that sounds good and still convey the meaning of what the person's saying in Japanese. It is really hard to do those. I want to do more of them,、mm-hmm. but I hope we can streamline our process more and find a way to edit and produce those foreign language episodes a little bit more smoothly. So that's a challenge, but yeah, we're going to get better at it. And it is something that is really worth the effort, I think, because getting to hear from sake brewers directly is something that. Is so valuable. I know when I was first visiting Japan and getting into sake, being able to sit down with a brewer and ask them questions and have a translator there to help help me understand was just so valuable. And I, I am really happy we can share that experience with all of our listeners. And, you know, if we ask good questions, then that'll help people. Get a better understanding of the way that the Japanese sake brewers think. And it's super exciting. We just got to work a little bit more on the technical side, on the process. And I think <laughs> we'll, get a, we'll get a few more done in this coming year. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Tim, we are approaching the end of this episode. So, got to ask you what is going to be your sake revolution? Resolution for 2022. Hmm. Okay. Well, for my revolution resolution, I was thinking of trying to drink less, but higher quality. Ooh. So, so we're talking about going, wait a minute. You're already Timothy. Daikin Joe Sullivan. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I say higher quality, it's not necessarily Junmai Daikin Joe only. Oh, <laughs> sorry. My, head, my mind immediately went there. It's like not drinking just for drinking's sake, trying to f- drink less, have fewer calories. But when I do enjoy a sake, make it really purposeful and really focused. And really learning something or studying something. What、mm. do you think of that? I like it. That's a, I think, and, I, and I think that with the show, you're going to have a, a, a pretty good time of that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and I think we can learn something from every sake we drink, but I want to be more, I guess the way to express it is just to be more thoughtful about what I choose to drink in the world of sake. Not just grab something without thinking about it and just drink it thoughtlessly, but really make a very conscious decision about what I want to drink, what the goal is, what I want to learn, what I want to study. That's pretty good, Tim. Puma, what about you? What do you want to achieve with your resolution for 2022? My goal is documentation. Ooh, I like that. I, my goal is to photograph. And write something about、mm. every single sake I drink in 2022. I think this is impossible. I want to put it to good use, jot down just a little something if I can about everything I, I taste, and have a better understanding of it, have something I can go back and reference.、Uh, I've done that a little bit. I, I, I tried to get into it a little bit in 2020. And、a little bit in 2021, but I never really focused on it. That's the goal, focusing on that. That's great. I've tried to do that in the、yeah. past. <laughs> It's, It's hard. hard. <laughs> It's hard, especially when you're out enjoying yourself. The last thing you want to do in the middle of like having fun with your friends is whip out your little notebook and start taking notes. Everyone's going to look at you like、yeah. you have three heads, but. Uh, it's, it's a really admirable resolution. And I firmly believe that when you write things down while you're tasting, it stays in your memory much, much better.、Uh, all right. I think we're going to wrap it up for 2021, Tim. Hard to believe. It feels like we just started 2021. <laughs> 
But at the same time, it feels like we've been in 2021 for a thousand yes. years. Well, I hope that 2022 is going to maybe see us visit Japan. We can hope, right? We can keep the hope, keep yeah. hope alive. Yeah, may, maybe maybe just in time for the Hiroshi. That's <laughs> yes. right. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take that Hiroshi. Yeah, I will take it. <laughs> All right. Well, <sighs> well, this was really fun. We discovered a few wonderful sakes on our way out of 2021, and I had a a lot of fun tasting this with you, John. I want to mm. thank our listeners so much for tuning in. We really do hope that you enjoyed all of our shows for 2021, and we hope you will come back for next year. Now, if you would like to show your support for Sake Revolution, one of the best ways to help us out would be to join our community on Patreon. We are a listener-supported show, and all of the funds that we raise on Patreon go to the costs of producing, hosting, and editing our show. And to become a backer, you just go over to patreon.com slash sake revolution. The link is right there. And boom, you are instantly supporting us. But wait, you're already supporting us just by listening. And we really do appreciate it. Everybody out there who listens every week. Also, another way that you can help us out is to write reviews over on your podcast platforms of choice and, of course, tell a friend. You got a friend that you want to introduce to sake? Introduce them to our show uh, while you're doing it. And as always, to learn more about any of the topics or any of the sakes we talked about in today's episode, be sure to visit our website, sakerevolution.com. And there you can check out all of our detailed show notes. And for all of your sake question needs... I don't know, a nice little place to give us feedback. We've got an email address for you. It's feedback. Good name, right? Feedback at SakeRevolution.com. So, until next time, please remember to keep drinking sake, raise your glass, give it a swirl, and come by. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year, Tim. 